Hello, in this video I'm going to solve the following problem for you. Evaluate the following integral. Integral d of x over x times 3 plus x squared times square root of 1 minus x squared. That would be a good idea if you pause the video at this point and try to solve the problem yourself first. If you do your calculations correctly, one possible answer that you might get is as follows. 1 over 3 ln of absolute value of 1 minus square root of 1 minus x squared all over x plus 1 over 12 times ln of 2 plus square root of x 1 minus x squared squared all over 3 plus x squared plus a constant c. Uh, okay, now let us solve the problem. So I would consider this a good problem because usually this uh, appearing in an integrand indicates that the sub trigonometric substitution is useful, x equals to sine theta, for example. Of course, I'm not saying this is not possible, but then the problem becomes a little bit harder than the one that I present here. So here, I will take this one to be u to get rid of the square root of 1 minus x squared in the first place. So I introduce a new variable u, which is 1 minus x squared square root. And then I raise both sides to power 2, so it becomes 1 minus x squared. Then I differentiate both sides, so this becomes 2u du. And the left, right hand side becomes uh, minus 2x dx. Then I divide everything by minus 2, so what I will get is x dx is minus u du. Okay, but I do not have the combination of x dx there, so it motivates me, so let me call this integral i. So this motivates me to multiply the numerator and the denominator by x to make up the combination that I need. So this becomes x squared 3 plus x squared square root of 1 minus x squared. Now everything is ready to do my substitution, but of course here I need x squared, and here also need x squared. So from here, I calculate x squared. It becomes a 1 minus u squared. So then this means that 3 plus x squared is 4 minus u squared. And now I plug everything here, so what I will get is integral, instead of x dx, I put minus u du, and in the denominator, instead of x squared, I write 1 minus u squared, instead of 3 plus x squared, I write 4 minus u squared, and instead of a square root of 1 minus x squared, I just simply plug u in. And then what happens, this u and that u are cancelled. I use this minus sign to flip the order of these two terms. I also flip the order of these two terms and I pull the minus sign out. So at the end, this minus sign will survive, but I am allowed to swap these two terms. So what happens is then minus 1 divided by u squared minus 1, u squared minus 4, and then I have du. Okay? So u and u are cancelled. I flip this, it gives me a minus sign. I flip this, it gives me a minus sign, a minus sign here. I have three minus signs, so it becomes minus 1 at the end. But then immediately you see that I don't need to do any trigonometric substitutions at all. Uh, I can use the method of partial fractions to solve this because my integrand is now a rational expression in terms of u. But of course, for that case, I have to factorize these two terms as much as possible. So let me just do it here. So I would write minus 1 over u squared minus 1, so I can factorize it as u minus 1, u plus 1, and then I will have uh, u squared minus 4, I can factorize it as u minus 2, u plus 2, and I decompose it to four partial fractions, because each one of these terms is a first-degree polynomial, so I just choose a constant uh, in the numerator of each one of them. So this becomes a 
over u minus 1 plus b over u plus 1 and then plus c over u minus 2 and then finally d over u plus 2. Of course in general uh, I can I have to multiply everything by this denominator then I have to expand those uh, polynomials so that the right hand side becomes a polynomial of degree 3 organize the coefficients and then the corresponding coefficients on the right should match with the corresponding coefficients on the left and then I can have a system of equations and solve them. This is the general technique of course we can always do that but for the case that I have monomials here I mean I have the first degree polynomials here there is always a simpler way to do it and then I will teach you here. For example, if you want to find this a, you ask yourself what u makes the denominator zero? Of course, clearly u should be one. Then you go to the other side, take that uh, term away and replace u with one. So what happens? This becomes two, this becomes three, six, this becomes minus one, so it's minus 6, and I have a minus 1 here, so it becomes 1 over 6. So in this way, I know that if I solve that problem, A becomes um, 1 over 6. And now for B. For B, let me repeat. I go here, I ask myself for which value the denominator vanishes, then the answer is minus 1. I go back here to the left, I move this out, and then I replace u with minus 1 everywhere. So it becomes minus 2 times minus 3, so far 6 times 1, 6 minus 1 over 6. So b becomes simply minus 1 over 6. And for c, the same. I ask myself which for which value this is 0. u is 2. I take this out and replace u with 2. This becomes 1. This becomes 3. And this becomes 4, so it becomes 12 minus 1 over 12. And finally, D. I have to choose u to be minus 2. I take this off and put u minus 2. So it becomes minus 3 times minus 1, so far 3. And then this becomes 12 minus, uh, minus 4 minus 12. And then I have 1 over 12. Okay, so now the integral that I'm interested in calculating that is the integral of this expression, but I can decompose it into four very simple integrals, yes? So integral i becomes equal to, instead of a, b, and c, and d, I plug those numbers in, and then I integrate. So it becomes 1 over 6, integral of du over u minus 1, minus 1 over 6, integral of du, over u plus 1 minus 1 over 12 integral du over u minus 2 and plus 1 over 12 integral du on over u plus 2. But these are very simple and standard integrals. This becomes ln of absolute value of u minus 1 minus 1 over 6. This one is ln of absolute value of u plus 1 minus 1 over 12, that is ln of absolute value of u minus 2, and that one is 1 over 12 ln of absolute value of u plus 2. I introduce the constant of integration c here. Okay, of course I have to switch back uh, to the old variable, but let me take some motivation from the answer in the book. So I want to manipulate this algebraically in a way that I can come back and show you that this is equivalent to this answer that the book has provided. Okay, so how should we do that? So here I see that I have a factor of 1 over 3 and a factor of 1 over 12. So factor of over 12 is already clear in my solution, so it motivates me. Uh, to factor a 1 over 12 here, it becomes this ln minus that ln. So I can write it as ln of this divided by that. And I have my constant there. And of course here, 
for the time being, I have the factor 1 over 6. So it becomes ln of u minus 1, this one, divided by that one. Yes, so let me make it a little bit bigger. So this is my answer. Okay, so let me switch back to my old variable here, which is uh, x. So this becomes 1 over 6 ln of absolute value of uh, u is square root of 1 minus x squared. Uh, so this is the square root of 1 minus x squared minus 1. This is square root of 1 plus x squared plus 1. Yes. And then here I have plus 1 over 12 ln of square root of u squared, sorry, 1 minus x squared plus 2. And then square root of 1 minus x squared minus 2, and then plus a constant c. Of course, uh, this is a correct answer, so you can leave it like this. But in order to show that this is exactly the same uh, answer in the book, so let me call this term, for example, a, and let me call this one b, and try to convince you and myself, of course, that a is the one that you see here, and b is the one that you see here. Okay, so, sorry, the, a is the one that you see here, and b is the one that you see here. So let us try to do that. Okay, so how can I do uh, for, uh, oh, oh, I made a mistake here. Uh, sorry, this, I don't know, this should be minus sign here. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so A. For A, what I want to do, I want to write it in this form, 1 over 6, and then I have ln of absolute value, square root of 1 minus x squared minus 1, and then divided by square root of 1 minus x squared plus 1. I would write it as 1 over 6 ln of absolute value of 1 minus x squared minus 1 over uh, 1 minus x squared plus 1. And I multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator because when I see the, question, the answer in the book, I see that there are no search signs in the denominator. So I will do that. 1 minus x squared minus 1, square root of 1 minus x squared minus 1. And then what happens? Now, this becomes exactly the numerator. So this becomes 1 over 6 ln of 1 minus x squared minus 1 to the power of 2. And the denominator becomes the first one squared minus the second one squared. And then I have the absolute value here. Okay, so let us see. So in the book, they have written one first, this second. So here, this is gone. So what happens is 1 over 6 ln of. Of course, it doesn't matter if I write it in the, the other way around. As, because of this even power, it doesn't matter if I write it in that way or the other way. And this minus 1 and 1 are gone. Minus x squared is left. But minus x squared can also be written x squared because I have the absolute value sign. So I can write the absolute value of the numerator divided by absolute value of the denominator, and then minus sign is gone. So then I put the absolute value for all of them. And then what happens finally? So this becomes 1 over 6 ln of... Uh, I can write it as absolute value of 1 minus square root of 1 minus x squared over x totally to power 2. And then I can put 2 in the back, and this 2 and 1 over 6 can be simplified, and I can write it as 1 over 3 ln of absolute value of this expression divided by that expression. And of course, in this problem, so you don't need to put absolute value in the, on the numerator because 
uh, 1 minus x squared is always less than 1, so the numerator in this form is positive. So if you want, you can continue and put the absolute value sign only for the denominator. So I hope that I could convince you that this a can also be rewritten in this form, which is exactly the one given uh, in the book as the answer. Now, let us go to part B. So if I want to do this, the trick is the same. So I would write 1 over 2, 1 over 12, and then I will do it the same. So I will multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. Then uh, the conjugate of the denominator becomes exactly the numerator. So if I do that, it becomes the numerator to power 2. And the denominator becomes the first one squared minus the second one squared. Yes? And then I will have plus C. I, you don't need to write C, sorry, I'm just calculating. Okay, so let us see what happens here. Uh, okay, so let me uh, see that I should have a positive 3 there. Yes. Ah, yes, that's correct. Because this becomes 1 minus, one. this is minus 3, so it becomes 1 over 12 ln of absolute value of square root of 1 minus x squared plus 2 to the power of 2. This becomes minus x squared minus 3, so I can factor a minus sign out. And then I see that uh, this absolute value sign will uh, cancel this minus sign. And for the numerator, I don't need any absolute value because of even power. So the answer becomes simply 1 over 12 ln of 2 plus square root of 1 minus x squared to power 2. And the denominator becomes simply 3 plus x squared. Okay. So as far as you are just, you want to calculate the integral, you can really stop here. The reason that I continued and did this because I wanted to convince myself my calculation is in accordance to the answer given in the book. Okay, uh, so I hope that this video was useful for you. Until the next video, be safe and goodbye. Thank you.